Hey, Acme Valley, I'm Brooke Stake, joined alongside by Zach Lambert and our third host, Seth Engel, for our first show of the summer semester. We're here to bring you the latest news from Penn State and State College. Coming up today, myself and Seth discuss who Penn State football's whiteout game opponent should be this year. Then we'll break down all you need to know about Penn State's upcoming changes to its masking and social distancing guidelines. But first, here are the latest headlines. The Bryce Jordan Center reopened on Tuesday as a coronavirus vaccination clinic. The site will be open through Monday, June 14th. People who wish to get their vaccine at the BJC can either receive the Johnson & Johnson or the Moderna vaccine. However, those who choose the Moderna option will need to visit a different provider for their second shot. Penn State men's hockey added a few new faces for the upcoming season. Carson Dyke and Ben Copeland both officially signed with the squad last Thursday. Copeland is a transfer from Colorado College where he racked up 17 goals and 33 assists in 97 games. Four Nittany Lions were honored on the all-region field hockey team. Freshman Sophia Galdo and senior Abby Myers both landed on the first team, while senior Bree Benarski and sophomore Elena Voss found themselves on the second team. The State College Zoning Board unanimously approved the zoning variation request for a new location of Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers in downtown State College. The restaurant plans to move into the space at 228 East College Ave. A move-in date for the restaurant is not yet set. Welcome back. So recently, Penn State Athletics announced that at all their sporting events, there could be full capacity. Obviously, this is huge and exciting news for the Penn State community, but it leads a big question to Penn State football. Which game should be the whiteout this upcoming season? So Zach and Seth, what do you guys think? I mean, honestly, I think it, it's been very rare that there's been an out-of-conference opponent um, to even play in the whiteouts. In fact, only happened twice since the whiteouts. Uh, establishment in 2004 I think that it would be really fun to just switch it up a little bit instead of having the same old Ohio State or Michigan matchup and why not just have an SEC of Auburn in there um, you know I think that could be really exciting and just something different something new uh, so I'd have to go with Auburn as my pick Auburn would obviously be the popular choice and the fun pick, but I don't want to stray away from these Big Ten opponents. The Big Ten games are a lot more meaningful, and with the Big Ten, with the game against Michigan coming later in the season, there could be a lot more implications on the line, and it could mean a lot more than just an early season game. So I think history, too, is on the side of Michigan because Penn State's fared pretty well against Michigan recently, especially in these last couple of whiteouts. So to take that away and put it on an out of conference game, I just, it doesn't really, the idea of it doesn't sit well with me. And it's something that I think really deserves to stay with Michigan and should stay in conference. Yeah, well, it's an interesting argument, especially when you look at the tradition aspects surrounding Penn State football and the way that it's kind of, it's now tradition almost to have a Big Ten opponent um, as the whiteout game. So I think if you're looking at it from that point of view, it definitely does make sense to say, hey, why not just keep it the same thing that we've been doing? You know, this is Penn State tradition um, instead of changing things up a little bit, which I think we've kind of seen over the past couple of years. I think I think this culture of the program is changing um, under James Franklin uh, with Lawn Boys, with Jake Zembeck, uh, with the Dreads, all, all this kind of, you know, chains and all that coming around the, the program recently. I feel like the way that things are going is like, hey, this is something new now. Penn State's kind of similar to Miami now as a glit and glamour type of program um, rather than, you know, just straight old fashioned blue and white that that we've been used to seeing over the course of Penn State's program history. Yeah, I definitely agree with both of your guys' points, but I'm going to have to go with Seth's first take. I think we should start something new. I think it would be great to see a whiteout week three with Auburn, but I'm excited to see what they do. And we recently had Tom Bahali on the Collegiate Football Podcast. You can see here what he said and what he thinks. I don't think Penn State's played an SEC team at home since, what, that Alabama game? I think in the early yeah. 2000s. So, I mean, either one, I think, is uh, you could pick. You. I'm sure they're going to be hyped. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's huge. It's a big, it's a national game. Of course, we white out that one and then make sure we white out the Michigan. You know, Michigan, Michigan always, you know, Michigan is like the Achilles heel. We got to make sure we put a dagger into these guys, you know. <laughs> so we just saw that he thinks there should be two whiteouts this year at Penn State's football season. What do you guys think about that take? 
I think that the strikeout is getting a little bit disrespected here. I mean, everybody in the nation knows that Penn State's whiteout is next level, but the strikeout really isn't talked about all that much. Now, why don't we just strike out Auburn, show the entire nation it's primetime ABC, Chris Ballard, Kirk Herbstreit. Why don't we show the entire country what the strikeout is all about, too, and show that Penn State is more than just one big game every season? Yeah, I I agree with you to an extent, Zach. Um, obviously, I don't think that Michigan should be the whiteout, and I think if we were going to do a stripe out, then I think that that should be the Michigan game because it's you know Michigan's been at so many whiteouts recently. Um, but I actually don't agree with the uh, with the idea of having two whiteouts in one season, just because dating back to two thousand four, we're going to kind of keep this to one tradition, you know it's one game. It's like, it's not two. There's one special game where everyone kind of gets together and, uh, and that's the whiteout. And it's not meant to be two games. Uh, that's why there's the stripe out to kind of make it another important game. So I definitely agree that there, whatever game is chosen to not be the whiteout, you know, just make that the stripe out and, you know, leave it that way. I'm not, I'm not really with two, with two whiteouts there. Yeah, hundred percent. Definitely see that take. We'll have to see what Penn State football decides to do. We are so excited to be here today. We are Canary. My name is Kat, uh, and this is Zach. Welcome back. In recent news, Penn State announced that it will align its masking and social distancing guidelines closer to the CDC and Pennsylvania Department of Health recommendations. This includes current masking and social distancing guidelines will remain in effect until the conclusion of the first summer session. So starting June 28th, the mask mandate will be lifted for all vaccinated individuals for both indoor and outdoor settings. This is really exciting for the Penn State community and I'm excited to see how this is going to work in the fall. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think this is you know, not just for the Penn State community, but kind of as the country and I guess the world as a whole, moving towards that sense of normalcy that we've all been pushing for since the coronavirus pandemic started um, last March. Uh, and this is kind of, you know, this is entering that new stage of like, hey, we are really getting back to normal here. Uh, Zach, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it kind of seems like a light at the end of the tunnel. So it's really happy and encouraging to see. Yeah, I think uh, in regards to sports, which is, you know, it's always so important to uh, the Penn State community. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, just how this first year back to normal really looks uh, just with the Penn State community. Is it like it's, it's usually always crazy, especially when you're talking about about football and basketball in recent years. Um, but, you know, next year is going to be different. It's not just a normal, it's not just a normal season. This is, this is the return to, uh, to Penn State kind of, you know, Penn State fandom in person. So while we're talking about this, there still are some rules. So unvaccinated individuals will still need to wear a mask inside all university owned buildings and masks will still be required for all individuals on public transportation and healthcare facilities and when constructing research and labs on campus. So Seth, like me, I have never been on Penn State's campus without wearing a mask or social distancing. So what do you think it's going to be like for us with this like new experience? Yeah, I mean, it should be super interesting. I feel like this is kind of Penn State's way of saying you have to get vaccinated to come back on campus without actually saying that. Um, which, you know, that's kind of controversial in a way. Uh, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to just seeing Penn State, um, you know, seeing Beaver and College Ave, like truly bumping as it should be um, in a normal year, which, you know, we didn't get to see last year, unfortunately. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that kind of come to life and, you know, really getting that Penn State spirit. Definitely. And I think I'm most excited for like being in person for big classes. Like I have no idea what that's like. Uh, I can't wait to see what it's like to be in a huge lecture hall. It's something I've never experienced before. So definitely will be an interesting senior year for myself and a next year for you. Yeah. And just speaking from personal experience, I mean, there's so much that you guys haven't got to experience yet that hopefully you will this year, like playing IM sports, 
just going to the intramural building or any of the gyms on campus, going to classes like Brooke, you said, walking across campus in the bitter cold is always a great thing to do at least one time. So it's going to be great to try to get back to all this stuff. And I'm excited for, you know, myself, obviously, but especially for people like you guys who haven't got to experience it yet to finally get the opportunity to. We're all looking forward to getting back to normal. For more information on Penn State's masking and social distancing guidelines, make sure to read more on our website. Well, that wraps up this week's episode of Hey Happy Valley. Make sure to subscribe and like this video and leave a comment if you want. Thank you for watching. Remember to visit collegian.psu.edu for more.